Hello friends, welcome back. Welcome to a brand new video. This is going to be somewhat of like a days in the life vlog doing some projects around the house. So since we've moved, we've just moved what we had and we haven't really done anything else to finish our spaces. So in this video, we're going to do our master bedroom transformation. Nothing too extreme like a makeover. More of just transformation from basic room to finished completed room excited to get that done and then we're gonna do our foyer entryway area and set all of that up just get everything kind of finished and coordinated and i have a cookie recipe that i made i'm going to share with you guys later in this video it's a kind of more of like a high iron cookie if you're looking to boost your iron intake but you still want something kind of yummy and sweet so kind of like a sweet healthy mix but we'll do those cookies later in the video as well and i'm going to take you guys along with me for a little shop with me in michael's because we're looking for some things that i need for a diy wall art project so i'm really excited i've been looking for some inspiration online and i have like a whole vision for this i think it's going to end up being in the next video where we actually make that piece we'll see whether or not we get to in it in this video because I want to do kind of a guest room transformation, especially before we have my sister coming to visit soon. And I would just, it'll be her first time like visiting here and seeing the house. And I'd really like to finish that room before she comes. So um, yeah, we're going to see if we can get to that. But anyway, we're going to go shopping and take a look at all of the Michael's spring decor and look at the spring shop of what they have there. And then also pick up the items that we need in there to hopefully do that DIY project very soon. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Getting the bubbles. Get the bubbles. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so here is kind of how the before is looking. We have already done a little bit in this room. As you can see, we've already hung up our curtains. We have our lamps that we got about a year ago. We brought them with us when we moved to this house. And we did order these nightstands and Mike assembled them and got our nightstands in place. So we've kind of got the bare bones set of a room here, pretty much like you could leave it as is. And we've been having it like this now. It's been a little while, but it was time to just take it to the next step and finally do something on the walls. We debated whether we wanted to paint an accent wall, but for the time being, decided to just go with some artwork. And I actually, ordered these um again probably like a year ago and i was planning to put them up in the last our last house and i never did so we brought them here i still really like them and we just felt like it was the perfect thing to put over our bed so while mike is hanging those up i'm gonna go ahead and open up our area rug i just think it makes the room look a little bit more finished so i was excited to get this one i did debate um you know a few choices there were some rugs that i could have gotten a little bit less expensively however um on a vinyl floor a lot of the rugs would either scratch the vinyl or they would have like a not like a rubber type backing so some of the non-slip rugs they have like a non-slip backing to them but it's not actually safe to use on the vinyl whether it will stain or discolor your vinyl but it's it will say if you read about them like a lot of them aren't safe to use on vinyl floors so i knew i would have had to invest in a felt pad to put down under the carpet and by the time it was all said and done um, I think it would have probably cost the same or more than just buying this nice wool rug. I'm not positive if it's genuine wool or not, but it's like a soft, you know, fabric type. It's just like a material, kind of like a fabric material. It doesn't have that rough backing that's on a lot of the area rugs. So we have one of these by our front door. You guys will see later in this video that we brought when we moved and I... I really, really liked it. So I was excited to just do the same thing in our bedroom because I think this is such a beautiful rug. Of course, I wanted to thoroughly vacuum, dust, clean everything under the bed before we put this area rug down. 
I was so thankful to have Mike to do this with me. It wasn't really him helping me. It was more me helping him since he did the majority of the work lifting the bed and being able to hang the stuff on the wall and get the, the carpet under here. But so grateful to have him available to help complete uh, our bedroom transformation here. We also hung this mirror on the wall, but I really like this one. I love how it has the arch on the top. I feel like it fits with our house because we have some of the arched doorways and things in our home. And so I really feel like it, it ties in all together really nicely. And then this corner, I really felt like we needed a pop of green. So I was debating what type to put in here. And I found this slim olive tree, got our sheets washed, dried, made the bed, and also found this really long um, rectangular throw pillow that is so pretty. I just love the detailing on it, you know, for being kind of just a solid neutral, the unique stitching and detail on it. Beautiful. And I really like how this kind of finishes off our bedroom set without having too many pillows because Mike is not a pillow guy. He does not like having the bed loaded up with a whole bunch of pillows. That is not his thing. So I feel like this kind of serves the purpose with not too many pillows for his sake, but I still get kind of the complete finished look because I do like the pillows. And then we did take a ride over to Ikea as well and decide to look around there. Anyway, I saw this one and just, I thought it was the perfect thing. It's not a huge storage bench, like it doesn't have a ton of room inside. However, I think it's going to be perfect. We may actually just use this to store extra sheets, but if we do want to put smaller items, Ikea has these little fabric storage containers and you can get a pack of, I think there's six of them in here for like $6.99. So it's a pretty good deal. And from what I read online in the reviews, people said that these fit really nicely inside of the storage bench. So it remains to be seen if we will use that in here for some smaller items or if we're just gonna store extra throw pillows, throw blankets, sheets, things like that. And then I set the olive tree down inside of a basket. I think that just kind of finished off the look a little bit. Anyway, I really like how it all kind of came together here. On our nightstands, other than our bedside table lamps, the only other thing I have on here are the marble coasters that I picked up years ago in Home Goods. Really like them, kept them and I just have those on here, but we really haven't done much else. I don't know if we'll add some vases with some flowers or decor, anything else on the nightstands. The lamps are a little bit large, so I do just have a bottle of my skin oil, and then also I have a jar with some of the candy that my sister gave me back at my birthday. But other than that, here is how our bedroom turned out. I feel like it's so cozy and Mike and I are just so excited like to come in here in the evenings and get ready for bed. And we just were loving how the room really came together. And let's go over now and head into Michael's. We're gonna see if we can get all the craft supplies that we need for our DIY project. And also let's take a little look around at all of the fun spring decor and spring finds that are in Michael's craft store. They do have a lot of it actually on sale now. So the day that I was here going through Michael's, a lot of the spring decor was 60% off. I don't remember the dates of the sale to be off the top of my head, but it was really a good deal and I found a couple of things to pick up that I was just kind of even you know excited to find that were not things I actually went in there for doesn't that always happen do you do that do you go in a store and just find things that are not what you went in there for <laughs> but suddenly you have a perfect purpose and use for that item <laughs> Thank you. 
Anyway, I did find a couple of things to get and pick up for our home along with, I found pretty much everything I needed for the DIY project. So that will be coming up soon. I'm excited for that beautiful wall art piece. Let's hope it's beautiful anyway. I think it's gonna come out nice, but I'm excited to do some crafting very soon. So here is the before of our entryway. And I've just got a few things here that I'm getting ready to use. We brought this rug from the last house. Really like it, decided to keep it here. And it's perfect because it's kind of like this wool fabric or something. So it's safe to use on the vinyl floor. how the entryway is looking now and we've got the mirror up Mike just hung this up these are um, something we did earlier on when we first moved in we got these to keep shoes in to add these bases we have to and then I don't know if I want to do like greenery in them or we'll put them on this side I'm not sure, and then do something, they would work well here, and then do something like a little taller here. The other thing we're thinking of is our olive tree. So this is the one out of our bedroom, and I just want to check it here before I go ahead and buy another one. For this space, I want to make sure that we actually like it here. So I need you guys to let me know, what do you think? Should we keep an olive tree here. But I could go with something more tropical. I could do like a palm tree in the corner. I don't know like if the shade of green is a little bit off, right? Because it's a little bit more of yellow and brown tones in this artwork. And I feel like the green, the green tones in here are definitely a little bit different, <laughs> a little bit brighter, more vibrant green. And the artwork is a little bit more of like a, you know, tans and browns. Now you can see it a little bit better. <laughs> So I wanted to share a recipe with you guys for what I found to be called iron cookies. They're basically kind of like a molasses spice cookie, but to make them, you'll need a half cup of brown sugar, half cup of melted coconut oil, two eggs, or in my case, I used flax eggs, which are really easy to make, a quarter cup of molasses, one tablespoon ginger, one tablespoon cinnamon, one teaspoon of baking soda, and then one and a half cups of gluten-free flour is what the recipe calls for. You could probably make this with either flour, but since I have the gluten-free one on hand, I'm going to just go ahead and use that. So I don't have chopped pecans. I just have these raw pecan halves. So I'm just going to kind of crumble them up and put them in here. And I am trying to boost my iron. So I thought it would be um, helpful anyway to just get iron in any way that I can. I've been taking an iron supplement and then trying to eat oranges with it. Get, getting vitamin C that way because it helps your body absorb the iron. So, But I found this cookie recipe and thought I would make these for something sweet. And you guys, I just realized that in the last batch that I made of these cookies, I used baking powder and it says non-aluminum, so uh, which this is aluminum free baking powder, but now I'm confused because it actually says baking soda, not baking powder. I just assumed it was baking powder. So I think this time around on the recipe, we'll go and use the teaspoon of baking soda since that's what it actually calls for. This is a gluten-free recipe, so I'm using the gluten-free flour for it since I have it, but honestly, I'm sure regular flour would, you know, totally work fine in here if that's what you wanna use. They're just like a regular molasses cookie. Um, not even necessarily have to be like for iron, but just molasses has a lot of iron in it. 
All right, we need to add our spices in here. That's the last thing, which this recipe has a lot of different cinnamons. I really liked that because I know these are beneficial spices to, you know, consume and add, add in with your diet. So a whole tablespoon of each, which is great. Anyway, I'll link this recipe down below if you guys are curious about these molasses iron cookies. I'm kind of wondering if I can add more pecans into it than I did. Now, last time I, I just made them straight up like this and rolled them out and it was very sticky and I had to add a little extra of the flour, but then I went back and looked and it said to refrigerate the dough for an hour. So I guess I will go ahead and do that. Let's just go ahead, pop this into the refrigerator and then I'll cover it, refrigerate it, and then we'll come back and roll it out. So while I'm in the refrigerator over here, I would just show you guys quick. This is the other thing that I was doing this week to like help boost my iron. It has a lot of protein in it, but just sometimes pouring like half at a time of one of these um, Owen shakes over some ice and enjoying that. And this has, if you have the entire bottle, it's 28% of your iron. Oh yeah, now this dough is a lot firmer and easier to shape into a cookie. So I definitely missed that step before where it said to put it in the refrigerator because they were so doughy, I added more flour, but you know what? They still worked out, it was still fine, but a lot easier now to shape into the, the nice cookie ball. That might be a little bit large, but. And then we just need to set our oven to 350. Good morning guys. We are taking a little field trip out to a plant nursery and gonna see what we can find for our entryway. The olive tree is one option. I'm not totally sold on it. Mike is not that crazy about it being there and you know before I buy another one since I have it but I had it in our bedroom. I'm gonna go see if I maybe find something like a live plant that we can put there. So let's go see what we find. So, I don't know you guys, these were 20, they're marked down to 16, but it's looking a little... Maybe this one. So, here's another option for the front door. I took out the olive tree. Maybe it's just too much out here. Not sure if it... You know, it was just kind of overwhelming the space. So I have an orchid here that my mother-in-law gave me for my birthday. And we added a little gold candle that our neighbor gave us at Christmas time. Um, and then I'm just testing out, I dropped <laughs> some of these little wood chips, but this tray was from Michael's and it was how much? $14.99. I think it was 60% off because it was part of the spring collection that was 60% off. So this will be um, option B. So option A will be with the olive tree in the corner here. And then this will be option B, leave the corner empty, have the pop of color with the orchid. So here is kind of how it's looking when you can see the artwork and the palm tree here. So this will be option C, but I did get this bird of paradise right here. And that's the next thing is to figure out, should we have a bird of paradise in the corner or without? Like maybe, maybe it's better with the corner just empty, 
keep it like a little bit neater, cleaner, you know, maybe just less cluttered. And before I show you the bird of paradise in the corner, I wanted to also give you this quick little look at adding some pompous grass. That's like another option for the corner. And here we go now looking at the bird of paradise in the corner. So tricky to figure out like which one to go with. I got this little Dianthus actually for $1. It was on sale in Home Depot. And I thought that maybe that was another option for out here. It could look kind of somewhat coastal, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't like it that much. So I feel like, I, I feel like this was a good choice actually. So I think, let me know your favorites. I really wanna know what you guys think, but I'm definitely leaning toward this in order to go with the palms. Now, obviously I won't leave it in this planter, you guys. I just wanna see like how it looks and I would repot it into something else, definitely. That might be a bit cluttered. I think it's better to just let the little palm trees stand alone and we put this dianthus somewhere else. I'm sure it can find somewhere, maybe in one of the bathrooms. One last simple option here. I could do kind of this little collection of books. I mean, that's nice. It's classic, simple. Do you feel like it's missing something? I could try adding some of my little LED candles here. They don't have batteries. Shh, don't tell anybody, we'll get some. But I mean, that's like an option too. Are you ready for our little reveal? What are your thoughts? Keep the bird of paradise or I don't want kimchi to run out. He would probably love to take a little run. And here's first impressions without the bird of paradise. Let me know what you guys think. I don't know if it looks like it's missing something and it could use a little more green in the space. Or this, you guys. We could put it in the corner by the door, which I feel like that does kind of look nice when you're looking like from inside the house, you know? It's kind of pretty like that. There's our art, which I did have to switch. I realized I had that one and and that revert, like these two, yeah, we had it reversed. Anyway, this we had at the other corner, but here's how it's supposed to go. Okay, maybe this, maybe this. Should I keep it in this corner? I'm probably like way overthinking this, but what do you think, huh? What do you think? <laughs> I think we'll leave it like this for now. We'll see what we think, how we like it, and I can always move the bird of paradise, but definitely leave me your thoughts. I feel like I've looked at it too much, you know, when you just kind of overthink and overlook at something, see it too many different ways, and then you kind of just like confuse yourself. So I'm gonna see what I think over the next few days or whatever, but here is how it's looking right now. So here's what we've got for our Korean dishes. We have eggplant here, some cucumber. Big thank you to Mike for slicing up most of this. And then um, zucchini over here. I'm also gonna cook up some tempeh and this will be a great protein and iron source um, in addition to the salmon patty. So, you know, we have an either or for whoever wants what. So I've got garlic, green onion, and some soy sauce in here. We're just gonna let that cook a little bit. 